you're building an app and your app is using some kind of AI feature. For example, I was just building this app that has autocomplete here powered by AI. So I can press tab here and accept the suggestion. I can also try something else. This uh, recipe is this recipe. You can see sometimes it's pretty good, uh, but sometimes it has some uh, strange uh, suggestions. So I'm actually using a an AI model here using Olama. So this is actually a local AI model I'm using. But let's say I deploy this app itself. Now for this AI feature, I could use a third party hosted AI model, or I can actually also self host AI models myself. And there are actually some benefits that come from doing that. It can actually be cheaper. Um, you can have some more data privacy. You just have more control overall. So let's actually take a look at how we can host an AI model so that we can still run our app here, get this AI completion. You can see it's not perfect because I'm just using a small model here, but overall I would say it's pretty good. The model I'm using here, by the way, is Llama 3.2. And overall, I have to say, I'm actually pretty impressed with how good this is because uh, it's a really small model. It's only, um, it's only like uh, 4 billion parameters or something like that. And it actually gets it really good like you, you, you can see it it's able to finish the entire uh, sentence here and um, yeah it has some strange quirks but that's what you would expect from a very small AI model now I'm using Olama here to manage those models if you're not familiar with Olama it's basically a way to download models and manage them um, you can see the models that we can use here so I'm actually using Llama 3.2 yeah so it's actually a 3 billion parameter model that I'm using in the demo there now to try it out locally first before you host it and uh, let's actually see how I got this working so so I just have a simple Next.js app actually. So this is the homepage, just a bunch of text here on top, right? just a bunch of text. And then here I have the actual editor. That's a separate component. So it's keeping track of the actual text that I'm writing inside here. So if I type this recipe, that will go the text state here. You can see in a text area that's constantly being updated here with on change. Now we wanna have this ghost text appear when I uh, type something, right? So we have handle change. It will run on every time I type something. So it's gonna keep track of the text like that. Now, if there was already ghost text, it means I didn't accept it, right? So if I type now, it, would, it needs to remove this one. Right, so it will actually also clear the ghost in that case. Okay, so it's handling. Okay, so it's handling the change over there. Now, where is the ghost text coming from? Well, actually, I just created a custom hook here. So every time the text changes, we're gonna pass that to this custom hook, and this is what will give us that ghost suggestion. Right, so we're we're passing the text here to this custom hook. And so here it's gonna try to retrieve the actual ghost suggestion. Every time this text changes, we're going to run this use effect. Now it has some uh, debouncing logic, so we don't necessarily wanna fetch something every time I type. Instantly, every time I type, it would fire off too many requests. So let's say only if it's been half a second after I typed something, it's gonna uh, try to get another one. Basically a bunch of boilerplates here. What the core of it comes down to here. So here we are in the browser. So it needs to get a suggestion. So we fetch it from the API generate route. We have an API route here in our Next.js app and it's sending along the user text, right? That's all that we're doing here. Every time I type something and there's been a pause. So this is in the browser. So now it's gonna go to my server side here in API generate. Here is where we actually need to work with an AI model, right? So here we actually need to reach out. So again, I'm using Olama and Olama exposes a REST API on localhost on port 11434. And I can just call it API generate as well, also a post request. And I can pass it some options here. So the model I wanna use, right? So this is the model I'm, I'm using and the actual prompt. So I'm just telling, hey, you are a helpful autocomplete assistant. Uh, I found that it tries to repeat the prompt of the user very often. So I'm kind of screaming at the AI, I don't wanna do that. But so um, basically just really trying to make it clear, please don't, uh, repeat for its size it's still extremely good so uh, with these AI models they can stream or they can give the entire result in one go in this case I do want to get everything in one go it may take a little bit longer but uh, you will get everything in one go it's a bit easier to deal with but also I think streaming here doesn't make sense because I want the entire suggestion in one go and not character by character for example right so this is running on my own computer right now how do I get this well I installed Olama in case you're not uh, familiar with that you can download it on your computer 
and then and then if you open up your terminal you can run olama list to check if you've probably properly installed it now if it's the first time that you're using it it will be an empty list it will show you the models that you installed but if it's your first time there's not going to be any but at least you will see something so there's going to be an indicator that you installed it properly you can see i have three models installed on my computer i'm using this one in the app right how do you know that well it's because what am i passing here i'm passing it llama 3.2 how did i install those models well you can go here to models and i tried some actually i tried the gamma 3 model it's pretty good but I, it was not able to get great results for autocomplete actually which is kind of strange because this llama 3.2 it's already like six months ago so you would expect the auto models to be better but actually i found this one to be uh surprisingly good it's only two gigabytes so uh you get a lot of bang for your buck actually here anyway you can just run this code here in, here in your terminal it's a run command so it will immediately run the model since i already installed it i can just start typing but the first time you run it it will actually uh, pull it on your computer so here i can actually just chat with it as well if i want okay uh just uh chatting of course you can have a chat uh, with with the ai model i can do forward slash buy to exit here but if you want to use it in an app you may want to take a look at the API that uh, Olama offers. So this is just one example, one quick example of how uh, I did it. So it's just this port and then uh, you just send a body with the parameters that are required. Make sure you pick a model that's actually installed on your computer. And actually it's, yeah, it, it works really well, right? You can see the results here are actually, uh, yeah. I mean, it's still maybe a little bit uh not perfect it's not perfect but overall yeah i'm i'm pretty uh i'm pretty happy of course now in practice we want to deploy our app at some point and let people use it as well so we don't want to use our own computer we actually want to host everything somewhere now actually i had a good time deploying it to hostinger they are today's sponsor and they allow us to self-host these ai models on a vps we can even host, by the way, Next.js itself on a VPS as well. I will have another video very soon with Hostinger as well, in which we deploy with Docploy for the Next.js app. But in this video, I want to show you how to do it for the AI models. So, th so that we're going to have a lot of control over the AI model that we will use in our app. So they have a couple of different plans, um, depending on how big of a model you want to use you may have to pick some now actually i had a good time using kvm2 so that's what i will go with but if you really want a super powerful model you're going to have to take a look at these other options however for this video and uh, these specs are good with me i found that the llama 3.2 model was able to run on these specs perfectly fine now quick side note by the way you may say oh why should i pick hostinger one thing i like about hostinger is they have an olama vps template so we don't have to install everything from scratch ourselves they have already created a template so that the vps comes pre-installed with olama but also open web ui if you're not familiar with open web ui it's, it's basically a ui that we can use instead of the command line the terminal we can have a nice ui to deal with the models so i think yeah it's a major benefit that hostinger is familiar with the tools that we're using so we're not doing anything strange on our vps or something like that already available as a template okay so i'm gonna go with this plan i will choose this plan by the way you can find a link in the description for this and make sure to use my coupon code bytegrad uppercase to get a good price here for your vps all right, so then here we get to where you want to have the server location. I'm in Europe right now, so it's going to show me the closest one. And here we can pick the operating system. So we can go with a plain Ubuntu install, for example. However, they have a very nice uh, template here. If you search for Olama, they have a nice Olama template here out of the box, which actually I will use. So this will simplify things a lot. All right, so then I will continue here for the payment page. All right, then after paying, we get some uh, malware scanner. Sure, I'll take it. And we need to pick a password that we will use to get into our VPS. So you'll need this later, so make sure you store it somewhere, make sure you don't show it to anyone else. I just quickly created a .env file and just put it there for the time being. Okay, so I will just continue here, finish setup. All right, so then it's gonna provision the resources and I'll check back with you in a second. All right, so now my VPS is ready. We can immediately access it or just go to the dashboard first. You can see here is my VPS. It's coming with the Olama templates here. And if I now click on manage app, I will actually go to port 8080 on my VPS. So you can see the IP is this one and it's port 8080. And that's because open web UI by default runs on that port. Now I get a warning here because we're not using HTTPS, but I will just go to continue for now. 
And now I'm here in my open web UI. They have a really nice welcome screen here. Now the first time you go here, you can set up an admin account. Okay, make sure you are the first one that actually visits this page. So don't sh share it because this is going to be an admin account. Okay, so here we will create an admin account. And now we are logged into open web UI running on our VPS. And you can see it has already picked up that there has been a model installed on this VPS as well. This is just coming as a default with Hostinger's template. It's the 3.2 and then it's actually the 1 billion parameter model. And I can say hello, right? This is a familiar chat interface. So uh, yeah, so here now you can see I'm getting a response here. This is all running on the VPS. Okay, so pretty cool. Now what we want to do, of course, is we want to use that in our app. So how can we now use uh, this AI model in our app? And actually, I want to use a different AI model. How do I do that? So remember, this model actually has two versions here with Olama. We actually want to get the 3 billion parameter model. I will actually log into my VPS here. I'm going to use the terminal. Let me actually clear this out. VPS page here, we can see how we can see all the VPS information, including how we can get access. So we just use SSH into the VPS. Okay, so it will talk about a fingerprint. I'll say yes. And here we need to use the password that we chose when we set up the VPS. Okay, I'll paste the password right here. All right, so now I'm in my VPS and now I want to install model. Actually, I can just run it immediately as well. It will actually also install it as soon as I when I run it. So let's actually try doing this. Okay, so it's going to install the Olama, the Llama 3.2 model. They are not related as far as I know. All right, so then it has downloaded it and immediately runs it as well. So I can also just chat with it here in the terminal. But of course, yeah. All right, so now we have what we want. I will go out of here. And now I want to check if my open web UI instance has already uh, picked up on this. So let's actually see. It should automatically detect it if I open it up. Yeah, you can see now it has picked up that I also have this model here. Okay, so now I want to use that model in my app. Now we could use the Olama REST API again, try using that. However, I actually found it a little bit tricky to do that um, here in the VPS. It actually is easier to use the Open Web UI API. So the Open Web UI also exposes API endpoints and I actually found it much easier to deal with that here when it's actually hosted in the VPS. We can actually make a call to API chat completions and we do need to specify authorization here. So we need to create an API key. It's kind of, that's okay. So it's like uh, some built-in protection. We can make a request. So we need to change this a little bit. So previously we were just calling the Olama API, which is running on that port. So it's actually also running on the VPS on that port, but it's like internally running on the local host. We cannot just externally access it. So there's a bit of, so I found it, I personally found it a little bit tricky. So we're gonna call the open web UI API that's running on the VPS. Right, and here, by the way, in the dashboard, uh, you can see all about this model. Uh, we can see, we can configure certain things, uh, specify uh, whether it should accept image inputs, for example. So even set up a system prompt. So that's pretty nice, all from the dashboard. And then we have to change the code. So it's not using the Olama API anymore, but it's the web UI API. So what we can do is we can still make a fetch call here, but this time it's going to be to our VPS using this port. And here it is using bearer authentication. So we will need to get an API key from Open Web UI. But other than that, it's very similar, right? So here we specify the params. So we want we pick the model we want to use. It's actually more like a chat uh, messages here, but pretty much the same. But we do need to get an API key here. So how do you get that here in the dashboard? Well, if you click on your avatar there and then go to account, you will see API keys right here. Make sure you don't show it to anyone else. I will just copy it and uh, I can put it in environment variable, but let's actually try this out. So we will get some JSON. We're going to parse that. We're going to pull out the continuation text. Let's see if all of that still works. I'm going to say uh, hello. It's going to generate a suggestion. Let's see what we get. Now, actually, I had to change uh, the port here. It's actually port 8080. It's running on port 8080 and it actually should be slash API chat completions. Okay, so let's actually try it out. So now if I say something like um, the recipe or something like that, recipe, the re okay, so there we have something. All right, so there we go. Yeah, so here I'm getting a suggestion here. I can press tab to accept and, uh, and I can just uh, type and you can see that we are getting autocomplete here ghost text from the AI model running in a VPS here in Hostinger. So pretty cool. 
And yeah, I think it makes total sense, actually. If the results are pretty good, I would say the results are pretty good. And this can be much more cost effective and also and we also we have we simply have more control here so and so i think this uh, olama stack here on hosting could be a good option for self-hosting ai models of course we can make it much more sophisticated add some access controls some security rules i hope that you found it interesting and i want to thank you for watching i want to thank hostinger for sponsoring the video and i hope to see you in the next one